Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we have Phil Nash, who is the developer evangelist at Twilio. So welcome to the jam, Phil. Hi, Nick. Good to, uh, good to be here. Awesome. Cool. So um, to start off, we're going to focus a lot on uh, your messaging program, programmable API in this interview. So could you tell me about this product and how does it develop, uh, deliver value for developers? Uh, absolutely. Um, and uh, so I'm a developer evangelist, uh, which normally means I you know, spend time with developers in the community showing things rather than just kind of talking about them. So I was hoping to take us through a quick demo and actually show the programmable messaging API in action uh, today. Uh, so I'm going to grab and share the screen and uh, start off uh, inside my Twilio account um, and just kind of take you through what it actually means to, to have programmable messaging at, at your hand, at your fingertips. Uh, so this is me inside my Twilio uh, account. Uh, and um, you kind of see my balance and, and messages I've sent recently. Uh, but uh, in order to use programmable messaging, we actually need to start with a phone number. Uh, so if I'm going to head over to the, the phone number section and buy myself a, uh, a new phone number. Um, so this is, uh, you can do this when you, you sign up for a Toyo account. Um, for some reason, it wants me to buy numbers in the United Kingdom, but I'm going to get an Australian number uh, and uh, use that. It also wants me to use fax. I'm not going to do that either. We are talking messaging today. So let's, uh, let's get a, a mobile number. Um, there we go. And I can buy that right now. So uh, this is going to become a part of my account. Uh, there is an amount of, uh, in Australia, we have to do some uh, regulatory requirements uh, in order to actually buy a number, which I had done ahead of time. But now this is my phone number and uh, I can use it to make both voice calls and send text messages. Uh, and so we can go and configure this now. And uh, what we can immediately do, um, now we have this phone number. What happens is when, when Twilio, when a, a message or indeed when a call comes into, a, into this Twilio number, Twilio can turn that around into a whole bunch of like ways to tell you about that call and then do something about it. So the default is kind of using a webhook, uh, which is just an HTTP request to your application. So we have like a demo application uh, set to start with. Uh, but I thought I'd show you uh, when we have other options, Twimblebin, Function, Studio Flow, and Proxy Service. I'll talk a bit about those in a bit, but I'm going to do a, a Twimblebin right now. And Twimblebin, oh, sorry, Twimble just kind of stands for Twilio XML, uh, Twilio Markup Language. Uh, and is a way to basically tell Twilio what to do with this message that just came into us. Uh, and so I'm going to give it a name, and then uh, we can just pick up a response. Uh, with messaging, there's not uh, an awful lot you can do, um, but uh, you, you get all the details of the message sent in, but we can also respond back with a, with a message. Um, so I'm just gonna uh, respond with hello, it, it worked because we're doing a, a demo and I like to see that demos uh, worked. Um, two more bins here obviously also help us out telling us that the, the XML is valid. So that's a, it's a useful thing. Um, but once we've done that and saved that, uh, then our number has already been, is now configured and updated to respond to us. Great, so that's saved now. Uh, and, and so my number is now ready to respond to, to me. So I'll just send myself a quick uh, message with it. That's um, uh, using the number. So I'm grabbing my phone. I'm just gonna send in uh, my favorite emoji, which is, um, uh, which you'll see in a minute, I'll show that off. Uh, and, um, uh, I should get the message back that says, hello, it worked. And uh, yes, I have, it's on my screen. Um, cool. So that's kind of receiving messages uh, and that's really useful. And basically like, you know, uh, when you're building your own application, you can do anything you want with the content of that message, saving, uh, pinning it to your users' uh, details, responding however you'd like to. Uh, but we also have like the, uh, the REST API, the other side of things where we can both create new messages, but also see all of these things coming in. And so I'm just gonna jump really quickly into so just a little bit of code. Uh, hopefully this will be understandable, but also show uh, what the power is that we have here. Uh, so I'm gonna start by, um, I'm gonna use JavaScript for this. It's one of my favorite languages and uh, uh, kind of a popular one uh, around the world uh, and um, just, bring in the Twilio helper library. And we have helper libraries in uh, seven uh, major languages now, JavaScript, Ruby, PHP, Java, C Sharp, um, and Go. Uh, and uh, just to make it easier to work with the libraries. Uh, and so I've got the, the helper library there and I'm also going to create myself a, an API client using that, uh, using that object. And to do so, I use my 
kind of account uh, account SID and auth token, which uh, you would have seen the account SID on my uh, on my Twilio dashboard, but not the auth token because that's the secret the uh, the password basically. So I keep those hidden away. Uh, once I've done that, I can then go get the messages that we sent that I sent to this number. Uh, so using that client, I can get the messages and I can list them out uh, to sent to the number. And I copied that earlier, so that's there. Um, and when we get those, uh, I'm going to set that just uh, variable I created earlier to the messages. And so that shouldn't take me too long. Um, and if I take a look, I've got messages uh, and I can just kind of run through them, for example, and uh, print out uh, print out the body and see the see my favorite emoji. Uh, so we've got m dot body. So we can go look up everything we want to about the message. And yes, uh, my favorite emoji is the two beers emoji, uh, mainly because I really like the fact that uh, whoever was coming up with the emoji standard uh, decided that one beer was not enough and we needed a, a cheersing version as well. <laughs> uh, Absolutely. Um, so now I've got these messages. I can. Uh, I also have, you know, my phone number here as well. Uh, and uh, and this is a nice point to show kind of the a bit more of the power. And we can actually call back uh, using that uh, client. So I've got my uh, my API client here, and I'm just going to create myself a little call uh, back to myself. Uh, and the whole thing looks mostly the same. So I'm going to use messages uh, as the first one, and the from uh, property, which is the number I sent the message from. Uh, I'm going to. We have to define a caller ID, the number that, that this call is coming from. Uh, and here we can actually, we have the choice again to either set up a URL, uh, which can send a webhook, uh, or because we're not going to spend time building up a, uh, a whole web application just for the quick demo, I can send back, uh, I can send Twimmel uh, in the actual request here as well. Uh, so it still looks the same, it's still a response. Uh, start and end, but inside this tool, we can do a whole bunch of stuff uh, with a call. For example, you know, we can uh, kind of dial onto uh, other callers um, and connect them into calls in either a conference or just one to one. Uh, we can do things like record, uh, where you can record messages. You can do um, uh, gather, which allows you to take input either from the the, the phone or or from text. Uh, from sorry, from speech. Uh, or we can do, you can read out things using say, or just for the moment, I'm going to use uh, play, which allows you to play a, uh, an MP3 or other audio file uh, just by URL. So I'm gonna add a quick one in that I've created uh, earlier as well. Uh, assets song.mp3. Um, and that is my call. Uh, when that completes, I'm just going to make sure log out the, uh, the call SID. That's the idea of the call itself, uh, and that should work. So that's my that's the call ID of the call I just created. I have the call coming in, and uh, if I put that on speaker, <laughs> very good. It has to be done. <laughs> So that's kind of the, the power of just a few lines of code there um, and buying a number uh, allows us to access yeah, the whole messaging service of Twilio uh, and turn that into calls as well if your numbers uh, support that. Um, just, you know, with just a few lines of code and we're not that much there. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's the start of, of dealing with the Twilio API uh, and the power that it has. Uh, awesome. and brilliant. Yeah. Wait, um, so shifting away from messaging, could you tell me a little bit about some of your other significant APIs? Um, yeah, I, so I think <laughs> it's funny, really. I think all of our APIs are significant in a way, but it depends on what your business is and what you need to do with them that matters. Uh, and the important point is that like, all of these APIs are, are programmable and usable for you in whatever manner that you want within your, within your application. Um, like it, it comes, uh, you know, it comes all the way from um, being able to send just a simple notification message by by sending a text message out like that, or or indeed notification kind of calls or alerts like that, um, all the way up to uh, our more platform kind of level stuff uh, like Toyo Flex, which is an entire contact center that's built on uh, the bedrock of the the in individual APIs, um, and Flex then itself is a platform that you can. Um, build, build on, change to the way you want to use it. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, and 
beyond that, I really, I like the fact that we have uh, uh, APIs for, for video calling as well. Um, being able to build, uh, build the interaction that you want um, between your customers or between your business and your customers uh, when you want to get them face-to-face -face or on the phone or just over messaging uh, is all really important. Yeah, brilliant, yeah. Um, and also going back to the messaging one, which is primarily what we're talking about today, could you tell us like some success stories you've had with um, messaging API? Definitely. I mean, there's, um, there's, there's lots. I'll, I'll try and keep it as sort of local as I can in a way. Um, so uh, over the last year, there's been a really great story of how um, a company called Fred IT, um, you might not have heard of them, but they are a, a massive dedicated kind of pharmacy IT solutions company uh, who have been kind of trying to um, revolutionize, I guess, prescriptions in Australia uh, and turn them into e-prescriptions, turn them online. Um, but kind of just making them online is one part of it, but being able to uh, send those prescriptions out to people uh, was a massive, uh, massively important to their uh, process, and also kind of got moved up the uh, up the uh, roadmap uh, as as the pandemic hit, uh, turning what was uh, what was like a six month kind of lead time I think they had to an eight week one, uh, and so in order to um, send messages out to, uh, to to customers to people who needed prescriptions, um, they Fred IT decided to use uh, Twilio's program of messaging. Uh, and the API, and uh, and that allowed them to do a bunch of things. So they, um, firstly, it did only take them that eight weeks in order to to, to build the solution, uh, but um, it also allowed them to do a bunch of different things. So not only are there like notifications for uh, a new prescription sent out via SMS, which um, which the users can then kind of click on, they get a QR code, show that to their pharmacist, and get given their uh, prescription. Um, they, uh, they also implemented kind of two-way messaging uh, over, uh, in this case, the WhatsApp API. So, so Twilio's API supports sending messages via WhatsApp as well as SMS. Uh, and um, this, yeah, this allowed uh, them to build that two-way kind of uh, messaging between uh, pharmacy and customer to prepare uh, like a, a, a prescription, get things ready, um, and, and just have that two-way conversation with people. So um, messaging, yeah, is super powerful when you can notify people like that, but it's even more so when you can connect people, uh, I think. And that, uh, you know, that was an example as well for um, uh, Airtasker, uh, another Australian success story. Um, they, you know, initially, uh, when they started out, they found that, you know, many of their users weren't necessarily using their apps. They weren't getting push notifications. Uh, and email notifications are just a little slow when it comes to, um, working and, and, and reacting to things. And so that's where they implemented uh, SMS firstly as a notification thing. Uh, but then beyond that, uh, they were able to build um, two-way uh, messaging between kind of air taskers and then people using the service. Uh, and uh, so that, yeah, allowed for that real-time interaction between those, uh, between the, 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 the two people in the business. Um, and even more importantly, uh, Airtasker did so, you know, via a Twilio number. So it's not leaking personal customer data out of people uh, uh, between the either the Airtasker or the person kind of contracting them. Uh, that kind of use case became so kind of important. Like it, it's same, it's the same in Airbnb, it's the same in Uber or other Lyft sharing things that we ended up building an API specifically for kind of masking data like that. And that's that's Twilio proxy. Uh, so nowadays, if you need to build uh, phone masking kind of thing. You've actually got an API specifically for that. Um, and then another kind of example of that, uh, one I kind of like is Twitch. You know, Twitch um, streaming accounts can be incredibly valuable, uh, particularly for the big ones making lots of money with it. But in general, like anybody's account on that, on, on something like Twitch, uh, at least bears their reputation. So uh, protecting accounts from takeover is, is incredibly important to them. And so Twitch built two-factor authentication with, with Twilio. Um, and again, I say, this is one of those ones where it's such a useful use case that we actually now have APIs specifically for two-factor authentication, uh, Twilio Verify uh, in this case, uh, that make it easier and, and just handle the security side of things as well as just the messaging. Um, so, that, you know, there's so many, there's so many kind of examples out there. Those are some of my favorites. And I definitely think um, uh, I like to see more and more two-factor authentication myself in the world as I like to keep my accounts as secure as possible as well. Mm, yeah, awesome. Um, and finally, for you, Phil, what is the best way for viewers to learn more about Twilio and its products? The best way is to um, is just to get started and have a go with it. 
Um, and you can do so, you can sign up for a free account uh, at twilio.com uh, slash try Twilio. Uh, and, uh, and you can do uh, all of the things that kind of I just did in the, in the demo early. You can send yourself messages, make, yourself, make calls to yourself. Uh, if you're not a developer, uh, you can still have a play around with it. We have a tool called Twilio Studio, which allows you to build uh, drag and drop interfaces for communication flows. So you don't even need to know uh, any of the, the code that I was, was showing earlier. You can forget about Twimmel and about JavaScript and just do it via drag and drop. Uh, and yeah, you just just have a go, try things out with Twilio because uh, it is there and available for you to uh, to try that with. Brilliant, cool. Well, that's all we have time for today. Uh, thank you, Phil, for taking the time to join me. Thanks so much.